hello everybody welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to be covering flexbox in great detail now flexbox is a great tool that we can use in order to align our elements our items in the way that we want them to so instead of me just talking let's just get right into it and show you the powers of flexbox now this is going to be a, a, a css crash course because flexbox is a part of css so we need elements to style and thus we need to create an index.html file so open up vs code and create this index.html file so what you can do is you can have an exclamation mark and it creates this boilerplate for you which is terrific so over here we have this and now what you can do is you can go to your extensions and you can install an extension called live server so install this and then what you can do at this point is right click and then open this application with live server and what this does is now if i were to ever change this application so over to add something you can see here very faintly that this has changed as well so let's go ahead and now let's add some styles to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an index.css. Uh, so we're going to add an index.css. And then in here, we're going to create a link tag. So right here, this is just basic HTML. We're going to create this link tag and we're going to link the index.css. All right, so that's pretty much all we have to do for setup. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a div element so let's go ahead and let's do that so i'm going to go ahead create this div element and i'm going to give it a class of parents and, and you'll see why in a second and so let's go here and let's give this parent some styles so i'm going to give it a style that is width of 1000 pixels i'm going to give it a height of 1000 pixels and i'm also going to give it let's give it a background color of aqua and let's give it a margin of 50 pixels left and uh, or top and bottom and then auto to the left and right and that's pretty much it so if we if i were to do this and go to our application we get this box right over here and this is the parent box so now what i want to do is inside of this div i want to have other divs smaller divs but this time these are children so let's create another div and over here, we're gonna have another class, and this time we're gonna call this children. So children, very, very simple. And you know what? Over here, let's have an H2. And this is saying that, hey, this is the very first child. So we're gonna have one in there as well. And so here, let's just create, just again, some, some very simple styles. Let's actually copy these styles over here. And let's just change this to 300 pixels with width and height. And let's change the background color to some purple color. So now if I were to go over here, you can see that this is the application that we get. And actually, let's just go here and let's give this a color of white. And let's also, uh, let's also give it a border. So let's give it a one pixel solid black border. So again, now if we were to go here, we have this wonderful, cool application. Uh, we have this parent, and then within this parent, we have this uh, other div right over here. Okay, so now let's say uh, this, this card over here represents, I don't know, maybe an item that I wanna sell on my website or something. And now right now I only have one item, but uh, uh, what I wanna do is I want to add another item. So I wanna add another item right over here in this location. So to do this, uh, I would probably have to do something like this. So I'd go here and then I would go here and then I would say this is item two. Now the only issue, and you can probably see the issue, you can see how these items are aligned. So right now we have this item over here and I wanted the second item to be somewhere over here horizontally. However, by default, the div is going to take up the whole horizontal space and thus the second div is also going to take up the, the whole horizontal space. They're not going to be uh, uh, aligned horizontally, but rather they're going to be aligned vertically. And this is not ideal in some cases. In some cases, that's exactly what we want. Maybe this is a hero section and then this is another section. That's exactly what we want. But in other cases, it isn't. And in this case, it definitely is not. So how can we tell that, hey, Anything inside of this aqua div, this parent div, any child inside of them, we want them to be displayed in a horizontal fashion. 
And that's exactly where uh, display flex comes into place. So to do that, what we would do here is inside of the parent, we would say that we want this display flex. And what this basically means is we want all of these children to be aligned horizontally to one another and inherit a lot of the flexbox properties that we'll talk about a little bit later. So right here, if I were to do this and save, you can see now we have this item here as well as this item here. And they're, they're located horizontally, they're aligned horizontally. And this is great. So now if I were to add three, if I were to add three, you can see here, now we have our third one. So the flex direction by default is actually row. So this is the flex direction. So right now, by default, it is row. However, what we can actually do is specify the flex direction. So right now, this is the parent. And when we said display flex, we're saying that the flex direction, the direction of each child, how are they going to be aligned? is row because right now they're row. Now over here, we can actually explicitly say that. We can say, hey, we want it to be row and it won't change a thing. We can also, if we want to, override the default and say that this should be row reverse. So if I were to save this, you can see here, now it's reversed, one, two, three, and now the spacing is here. And we can also, if we again want to, instead of saying row, we can say column. And this kind of gets us back to exactly what we wanted, except now we have a lot of additional Flexbox properties that I'll talk about later. And then we can also do, as you might imagine, column reverse. So this, this is column reverse. So let's actually just stick with flex row, which is the default. So we can kind of leave that alone. All right, cool. This is terrific. So now what is the next step? Well, let's actually talk about some of the inherent properties that we get for the child this time. So by doing a, a flex on the parent, the child has some properties that they can actually utilize that they wouldn't have been able to utilize if the parent is not displayed in flex. So let's go here and let's actually add child one and let's go here and we'll add child two and over here we'll add child three and let's save that. And then in here, what we can do is let's say child one, and let's copy and paste this two more times and change this to two and change this to three. And so right here, what we can do is we can actually define the order that we want this to be in. So over here we have order one, and over here we have order two, and over here we have order three. And so this is the order of the children. So right now, this is not really going to change anything. But if I were to change this to one and then change this to two, you can see here that now we have two, one, and three. So that is one really cool inherent child property that we get by having the parent display flex. Another thing that we can do is let's actually decrease the size of this to one. So to, to 100. And I'm going to do this very purposely. So over here, we have this very small thing over here. What we can utilize, and let's actually just go back to the regular order. What we can utilize is something called flex grow. So flex grow. And initially, I'm going to give it all one. So I'm going to give it all one. Flex grow, flex grow. Initially, they're all going to be one. And so you can see here that by doing that, by supplying it with all one, what happens is that each uh, uh, each child is going to be um, is going to be uh, exactly the same length, but the child's length in totality are going to span the the width. Sorry, not the length. The width of the uh, the parent. So they're going to be exactly the same, but the to totality of each one over here, each div, is going to be the uh, total width of the parent. Now, what we can actually do is maybe I want this over here to be double the size of these two. So what I can say is I can leave this as one, but over here I can keep this as two. So you can see here, if we did the math, this is gonna actually be double in size of this one and this one. Similarly, if I can do five times the size. So you can see here that now this is five times the size of this one and this one. So that is some cool inherent properties. 
And you can see how this can be really, really helpful. Let me just zoom in here maybe. It'll be a little bit more helpful if I did that. But maybe like this is some sort of nav bar. And over here we have the logo and over here we have the actual, maybe this is just the, the span of the nav bar. And then over here we have maybe a login logout page. So this, uh, this can be very, very helpful. Now in this case, we're just gonna completely omit it. We don't really need that, but that is some cool properties that I wanted to talk about. Now let's actually just get into some of the really cool properties and let's actually increase the size of this to 300. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about justify content and justify uh, or uh, and align items. So right now this is in a row. So as you can see here, it is in a row. Now what I can do here is inside of the parent, I can say, how do I want to justify the content of the children inside of our uh, inside of this parent? So what do we mean by justify content? It really means how we are going to place our items horizontally. By default, it is flex start. So flex start, meaning we're gonna start from the left and then we're gonna end over here. But what we could do is we can also do flex end. So we can do flex end, which means we're gonna start uh, from the end and then we're gonna go to the left. So that is one thing we can do. And what we can also do is flex center. So flex center. So you can see here now this is centered. Now here's some of the really cool properties. What if what we wanted to do, and let's go back to flex start. And what if what we wanted to do was we wanted to get this spacing, you see this extra additional spacing over here. I wanted to get to this spacing and I wanted to put it between the items. So right here, right here, we have two items. I want to put it between these items. And over here, we have two items between these items. But when there is no item, then you have no spacing. And this is a very common practice. We probably want to have a card here, spacing, card, spacing, and then card. So to do that, and this is extremely popular, we would use space between. So I want to get this space that was over there and put it between the cards. And that you can see here, now it's between the cards. There's other ones as well. So there's something like space evenly. And what this one does is it doesn't discriminate. So over here, it's going to add some space. Over here, it's gonna add the same amount of space. Over here, it's gonna add the same amount of space. And over here, it's gonna add the same amount of space. So if I were to save this, you can see here, there's the same amount of space um, throughout the, uh, the whole thing. And then lastly, that we have is space around. And so what this does is it looks at the edge of each element and it adds a spacing. So no matter where the edge is, it's gonna add spacing. So over here we have edge, so it's gonna add some spacing. Over here we have an edge, so it's gonna add spacing. Over here we have an edge, so it's gonna add spacing. So really we're gonna have double the spacing here than we do over here, because right here we only have one edge. Similarly over here we're gonna have double the spacing and over here we're gonna have just one piece of spacing. So if I were to save this, let's go here, say around, you can see here that this over here is double the size of this because we have two edges. So most commonly used, honestly, is space between. So that is something that we can utilize. Now, what we can also do is align our items. So align items is the same exact thing as justify content, but it is for the vertical axis. So we can do flex end. So we can do flex end. So we have it at the very end. And we could also have center. And actually a very common practice is if we wanted to center an item, and let me just zoom in here a little bit more. If we want to center an item right in the middle of a div, what we can do is go here. Let's go to the child. And what I wanna to do is I wanna center this right here, right in the middle. So a child can also be display flex. So over here we have a parent, but the child can also be display flex. It doesn't really matter because the child right now has this child over here, this child. So what we can say is display flex and then over here justify content center. And you can see here that that centers that uh, horizontally, but then we can also do align items center as well. You can see here that that is going to center it right in the middle. Now this, because this is display flex, it's going to affect any children 
any direct children inside of it. All right, that is awesome. So that is, yeah, so that's honestly, we're, we're getting really close to kind of being done this crash course. The last thing that I want to talk about is, um, or maybe the second last thing that I want to talk about is that uh, what you can actually do is align the children themselves. So let me just get rid of this align items and let's get these, these things back over here. And let's just get rid of the flex grow. Let's just get rid of that for now. So what we can do is what if I wanted, uh, instead of aligning every single element the way that we wanted it to, what if I wanted this element over here to be at the very bottom and then this element to be in the middle and then this element to be at the very top? Well, we can do that by going to the element itself and saying align self. And over here, what we can say is align self. And then we can say here, this is going to be at the very bottom. So flex end. So you can see only this element is at the very bottom. Now over here, we can say align self center. Align self center for the middle element. Save that. And you can see here that we have, we have this cool kind of checkerboard if you wanted to create one. Well, that was just a little thing that we can do. And of course, we can also do the same thing with justify self. So justify self. And this is really only going to work if the uh, uh, the flex direction. So the flex direction is column. So if I were to save that, you can see here the flex direction is column. And we can also utilize uh, justify self in there. All right. So let's just comment this out. I really don't want that in there. So the last thing that I want to talk about is what if what if I add another element in here? So over here, I want to add, say, this other element. What happens is, by default, Flexbox is going to shrink every single element so that we can actually fit it in. But really what I wanted was I wanted to move this element, I wanted to move this additional element right over here to the uh, to the left. So you can see here, I wanted to move it to the left uh, or not to the left, to the bottom left, I guess. So I want to have one element here, one element here, one element here, and then another element here, another element here, another element here. So how could we do that? Well, in the parent, we can say that what we want to do, and let's actually get rid of the height for this because it, it might make things a little bit wonky. What we want to do is we want to do a flex, flex wrap and over here, by default, it is no wrap. But if we say wrap, what that does is it moves that element, if, it, if there's not enough space, to the bottom. So let's go ahead and save this. And you can see here that that's exactly what it does. And now if I were to add, let's add um, two more elements. So we add, let's say, four fours. I don't care about the numbers. You can see here that we have this and we can also add margin in the uh, the child. So we can have some margin bottom. I don't know if like 15 pixels save that. You can see here that we have this margin. Uh, but now if I were to add another element, it's going to wrap to the bottom. So it's going to go ahead and wrap to the bottom. So you can see here we can have this really, really cool card effect. So that's pretty much it with Flexbox. Uh, it's really, really easy and it's used all the time. I use it all the time in my applications. So I hope you guys found this informative and I'll see you guys in the next one.